Hello, high school basketball fans, and welcome to Crestview High School in the Ray Etzler Gymnasium, where tonight it's non-league action on a Friday night between the Lima Central Catholic T-Birds and the Crestview Knights. LCC, under the direction of first-year head coach Sean Powell, brings a record of 14-2 into tonight's contest. And Crestview, under the direction of fifth-year mentor Doug Etzler, brings a record of 13-6. I'm Dave Bowen. My wingman tonight is Mark Bagley, the Cougar of all Cougars. LCC comes into the game tonight averaging 58 points per game on offense. They give up 45. And Crestview, 54 points in the, the offensive column. They give up 49. Coach Bagley, it's LCC, it's Crestview, it's a long-standing rivalry. What do you see as some of the keys for the T-Birds coming in to the Ray Etzler Gymnasium tonight? Dave, let's first of all go with the visiting team LCC. The first thing and really important for them is to apply pressure on Crestview. Speed them up, get layup turnovers to make the game faster. Number two, they got a rebound. Crestview has good size underneath and LCC needs to do a good job of winning both sides of the, of the ball there. And then number three is offensive execution. Ball and player movement will be key for LCC. We're expecting Crestview to play a little zone tonight to slow down the T-Birds. So with that in mind, we're talking about the team concept as a whole. Let's look at individual players or an individual player. Who's a player for our viewers to focus on for the T-Birds tonight? Obviously, everybody knows about Jordan Purdy, the impact he's had, and the veterans that, that LCC brings back with Burke and Parker and Foster. But I'm looking at Willie Foster, the six-foot sophomore, 11 points a game. He has a chance to be really explosive, and he's one of those players that's kind of unscoutable when you watch film. He can do things that others can, so he's my key for LCC tonight, Willie Foster. Willie Foster, the second leading scorer on this T-Bird squad at 11 points per game. The Crestview Knights, it's their home floor. They're coming off of two victories in a row. What are the keys for the Doug Etzler-led Crestview Knights tonight, Mark? First of all, they got to shorten this game. Long possessions making LCC play D. Number two, they've got to rebound as well and get extra shots. They have not shot the ball well outside of late. Get them extra shots inside. And then number three, emotion. They're at home, rivalry game. You got to play with emotion, but you can't be emotional versus T-Birds because they're going to make runs tonight. You're exactly right. It's going to be fun to watch. How about a player specifically for Crestview for our fans to take note of in this game this evening? There's a lot of great players on Crestview, but I'm going to focus on a key player from their state runner-up team last year. That's Jared Harding, a six foot two senior, eight points, five rebounds, the best athlete on Crestview's team. He's got to exceed those numbers tonight to give Crestview a chance to get the win on their home floor. Jared Harding, also a second leading scorer for Crestview at eight points per game. Second leading rebounder at five points. Couldn't agree with you more, Mark. It is a rivalry game. LCC leads the overall series 22 to 13. We'll be back with starting lineups. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School. As starting lineups are being introduced, we want to thank our sponsors for tonight's game. Our scoreboard sponsors, Pat's Donuts and Cream. Visit any of our four area locations, including our new location at 600 South Cable Road next to LCC. Our free throw sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. And then we're excited to be giving out a Stolly Hustle Award sponsored by Stolly Insurance. Our starters for the 14-2 Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds under the direction of Sean Powell. Starting at guard, Jordan Pretty, the 5-foot, 10-inch sophomore, number zero. Averages 18 points per game for the T-Birds. Leads in that category, Will Willie Foster, one of the players to watch. Number one, a sophomore at 5-foot, 8. Carson Parker, seems like he's been in an LCC uniform forever, Mark. Carson Parker, number two, the senior, six foot three senior. Damar Foster, number five, the five foot 11 senior. And then Billy Burke, also a senior at six foot six inches tall. 
Also seems like he has been in an LCC uniform forever and is, again, having a great year, as are his teammates and the T-Birds as a whole at 14-2. For Crestview, your starters, number three, Callum Putman, the six-foot-one senior forward, leads the team in three-pointers at 20 on the season. Tommy Hefner is your point guard. He is a junior guard, number 10. And then Jared Harding, number 11, a six foot two senior forward. Again, a player to watch, according to Mark Bagley this evening. Ren Sheets, the junior, six foot six, post player, number 33, leads Crestview in scoring at 16 points per game. And his field goal percentage, percentage an amazing 73%. And then rounding out the starting lineup for Crestview in the post, number 44. Six foot five inch senior Connor Sheets, second leading scorer at eight points per game, shoots 49% from the floor as well. Our JV game tonight was won by Crestview in a thriller, 36 34. Mark, here we go. We got her all teed up. Let's get after it. Yeah, it's going to be a fun night, Dave. The gym's nearly packed. It's nice and cool in here today after a 65 <laughs> degree February day. And uh, it's going to be a fun game tonight. Yeah, we're in the top row, and it's warm in here in the Ray Etzler Gymnasium as it's been a warm Friday here in February. We'll take it. The tip is up. Crestview controls Tommy Hefner with the basketball. Crestview in white, the T-Birds in red. Willie Foster with the steal, and he scores right away. Steal in the bucket for Willie Foster to and get now things started. And there we go right away. Back and forth action. Give the bucket to Ren Sheets. And both teams played to their strengths on the first possession. There's a steal by the Knights. Kellen Putman brings it up. Comes up with the steal, and he's going to set things up. Tommy Hefner swings it around. The T-Birds in man-to-man -man defense. Hefner down to Ren Sheets. Working on Billy Burke. Goes up and under. Draws contact. Nice play, good footwork right there by Ren Sheets, Mark. And obviously Sheets is, is a load inside, and Crestview's going right to him early here. That's a smart move to get their confidence inside. I've been so impressed with Billy Burke throughout his career. I actually think he's deferred a little bit during the season, passing up good for great. He might have been able to get a good shot, and he passed it up to a teammate for a great shot. But I think it's a key that Crestview wants to try and get him in foul trouble, get him off the floor, and right away they go to Ren Sheets, and he picks up the personal on um, Billy Burke. And then from the Lee's famous recipe free throw line, Ren Sheets goes two for two. The T-Birds with the basketball. That's Carson Parker. There's another deflection, almost a steal by the Knights, Kellen Putman, but Parker picks it up. DeMar Foster from three. Nicely done by DeMar Foster. He shoots 34% behind the arc. That is his 19th three on the season. And here comes the pressure from LCC. Connor Sheets with the ball on the baseline. Goes in to Ren Sheets, who was not guarded. A guy that shoots 73%. You don't want to allow that to happen. He was wide open underneath. They doubled in the corner, Dave, and it was a high-low action and shot a layup. Crestview playing a 2-3 zone in the two in one of the games that um, the T-Birds lost. We had a situation where St. John's played a 2-3 zone, uncharacteristic of them. Crestview likes to play man mostly, but I think we have an injury on the floor, Mark. I think that is Willie Foster maybe turned his ankle on the previous play where he tried to recover and contest Brent Sheets' power shot. He's out of the game, and in the game is Matthew Quatman. Crestview with the basketball, looking high-low. Sheets reverses it to Hefner, screen across, go into Ren Sheets. Ren and Connor Sheets not related. Tommy Hefner with a nice little pull-up jumper from 13 feet. Nothing but cotton. Hefner with his first bucket. LCC comes right back. The shot doesn't go for Pretty. Jordan Pretty attacks the rim, comes up empty. Crestview with the basketball. Good action right away here. It's warm outside, it's warm inside, and the girls are, or the guys are playing loose, but there's a steal. Quatman with the steal, and that's going to be a block call on Tommy Hefner. 
Hefner picks up his first personal foul. And we're going to have two shots at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line for Matthew Quatman. Quatman hasn't been there off that often. As a matter of fact, only one for two on the year. First one's up, and it's a little short, Mark. It was, and that's all we'll say about that. But LCC has an opportunity to have three points on basically layup turnovers early on, and that's been the only thing that Crestview has done wrong. They're shooting the lights out early on in this game. Quatman goes 0 for 2 from the line, and right away off the miss, full court pressure by the T-Birds. Kellen Putman gets it to Hefner. Hefner attacks the middle of the paint. He pulls up. Roll doesn't go. Billy Burke with a nice rebound. LCC in transition. And they're staying in that 2-3 match. We talked about LCC. They really shoot the ball fairly well from outside, but we think a lot of those threes occur off of transition, rhythm threes, as opposed to finding that shot in the half-court offense. And, and LCC just made an adjustment there. They're going four out, one in, and I think they're trying to get somebody in the high post in the, in the short corner right now, Dave. Now they're going five out. Billy Burke going to set screens up high. Quatman with the basketball to Parker. He ball fakes, looks to pass, deflected by Connor Sheets. Quatman maintains possession. Crestview's hands have been super active early, Dave. A lot of tips and deflections. Burke with the ball in the dead spot. Down on the baseline, just off the block. Finds Carson Parker. Give Burke the assist. Way to see the floor for Billy Burke. Give Carson Parker the bucket. You talked about deferring. That was a really nice pass, though, off, off the from Burke. Yeah, good for great right there. Kellen Putman from behind the arc comes up empty. Damar Foster with the rebound. Looking to transition. He's going to go coast to coast. Draws contact. Hoop in the harm. He's got an opportunity for the three-point play the old-fashioned way. And, Dave, we talked about what else these Chiefs trying to do. They're trying to speed the game up. That was a quick three by Crestview, and it resulted in a layup and one opportunity. Damar Foster picks up his first field goal of the game. He's at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. 0 for 3 out of the gate from the line for LCC. Not a recipe for success, but it's early. Tommy Hefner goes with the left hand and scores. LCC right back. Crestview with the 10-9 lead on the Pat's Donuts and Cream scoreboard. DeMar Foster from deep. Doesn't go. Harding with the defensive board. Red Sheets on the baseline, takes Damar Foster. Baseline, nice, nice control, just does a great job. And Red Sheets active early on the scoreboard. That at times has been an issue that Coach Etzler would like to see him be more aggressive offensively. He's getting it tonight. He is. He's really winning that battle inside. And nice, patient move. Angelo Collins down low, doesn't. Get the shot up as Connor Sheets with the block. Collins, a nice sub off the bench for Coach Sean Powell. Jared Harding with the basketball up top over to Connor Sheets. Tommy Hefner guarded by Tamar Foster. Quatman on Kellum Putman denies him the entry or the pass. Another deflection. And that's going to go off of Jared Harding and out of bounds. Nice defense by Jordan Pretty right there. And with that whistle, we haven't had a chance because of the action to introduce our officials tonight. They are Josh Kurtz, David DeBerry, and yes, we have an official by the same name as one of our coaches, Doug Etzler. And Luke Offerly, your friend Doug Etzler, he's not just in the stands, he's part of the game tonight. Luke Offerly, a Longtime viewer of WOSN and good friend of Doug Etzler's. It's LCC basketball, again, going against the 2-3 zone. Hayden Parrott. And there's the lob. Parker to Willie Foster. Two-handed jelly. And the LCC crowd is up and out of it. Crestview coming right back. And he just came back in the game from a sprained ankle, Dave, and, and showed <laughs> no effects of it. Oh, he's healthy. 
Definitely. Great play. Jared Harding attacks, and he draws contact from the aforementioned Willie Foster, and he's going to pick up his, personal, his first personal. And through all the emotion of this game, the first six minutes, Dave, really both teams have played to their strengths. They and have. And that's why the score is so close right now. And it's fun to watch, too. Jared Harding at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Jared Harding nails that first free throw. He's a 66% free throw shooter. Pushes the lead to two for the Knights on the Pats Donuts and Cream scoreboard. Harding eyes, flies, nice and easy, and right through the net. And when you don't play much zone, and Crestview doesn't, Dave, you're susceptible to those quick hitters like that lob we saw. Susceptible to that and also rebounding, although thus far LCC has not been able to take advantage of the offensive boards. But you're right, a lot of times in a 2-3 zone, in any zone, you forget to check somebody out. We'll see if LCC can take advantage of that. And to this point, they have no offensive rebound, so Crestview's done a really good job there. Parker Judy in the game now gets a touch. Back out to DeMar. He's going to attack. There's going to be contact. And that was a good foul by Crestview. That was a straight line drive for a layup, and that, that was his only chance on that play. Hayden Parrott picks up the personal. That's his first. Crestview's third of the first quarter. Minute 30 to go here in quarter number one. Coach Powell calling out a play. DeMar Foster relaying it to his teammates. Little flare screen action. Nice job by Ren Sheets getting a hand on that pass intended for Angel Angelo Collins. Burke with the basketball. And a lot of contact down low. And Burke draws the personal. And still not in the bonus yet. They, they had one to give there and with a minute 12 left. And that, that was a smart foul because it was a mismatch inside with Burke. Braxton Leith picks up the personal, his first, team's fourth. DeMar Foster to inbound. Billy Burke trying to decoy a little bit. A turnover, but DeMar picks it off and attacks the rim. Red Sheets with the block. Gets up in the air, big time block by Red Sheets. It's big boy basketball out there, Mark. Peyton Parrott being doubled. And there's gonna be a personal foul there on Willie Foster. And that's Willie's second personal here. LCC only has three total, but Willie's got two of them. That's a bit of a storyline here early on. Yeah, he was injured early, then he got in foul trouble now. So uh, neither team has a foul to give. So we're bonus the last minute of the quarter. Hayden Parrott with the basketball brings it across the timeline. Braxton Leith. Triple try, doesn't go, but there's Jer Harding. You said he needs to be big for Crestview. He is right there as a big offensive rebound stick back for Harding, makes it 16 to 11 nights. And Crestview has dominated the boards in this first quarter, Dave. That's why they have a five point lead right now. Purdy, Pretty attacks the baseline, doesn't score. There's an offensive rebound by Burke, but he doesn't score. Pretty gets the loose ball, and he gets his first bucket of the game. So a scramble there, a little bit of chaos, and it works to LCC's favor. 10 seconds to go. Kellen Putnam brings it across the timeline, goes into Connor Sheets, kicks it out, inside out action, short by Hayden Parrott. And that's gonna be the end of our first quarter. Fast and furious on our Pats Donuts and Cream scoreboard. It's night 16, T-Birds 13, High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School in the Ray Etzler Gymnasium. You can stream the WOSN channel anytime, anywhere for only $8 per month. Download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wosn.tv. Mark? As we said, fast and furious action. What do the numbers tell us from quarter number one? Well, the big play for Crestview was the, was the boards. They were up six to three, but more importantly, they were six to seven from two. That's their strength. 
for their 16 points. And 4-4 four four from the line. LCC 5-11, 1 for 3 from 3, 0 oh for 3 from three uh, from the free throw line. It's a little bit of cool shooting for the T-Birds as Damar Foster comes up with the miss, but there's another offensive rebound by Billy Burke. Parker gets another off, gets his own miss, so two offensive rebounds on this first possession by the T-Birds. In any game, you can't give up uh, multiple shots on the same possession, but it's amplified in a game of this magnitude. Yeah, in the last two minutes, they have three offensive rebounds, so I'm, I'm sure Coach Powell emphasized that um, in, in, at, at the quarter break. And we talked, that's one of the challenges of playing a zone defense, especially when you don't play it very often. You got to check out. And Carson Parker drills from deep the three. That's his 11th on the season. Here comes the pressure. They're doubling everywhere right now. Right there in the trap zone, you got the sideline and the timeline to help you out. Hayden Parrott, you got to stay strong and handle that pressure. Don't back away from it because that's what can happen. He stepped on the sideline. And that's their fourth turnover. But that's the kind of turnover you can, you can live with if you're you. It's a dead ball turnover. Get your defense set and move from there. LCC is going to keep on trying to press the tempo. Nice move by Damar Fo Foster. He has the blow by and the bucket. Picks up his seventh point of the game. And that's tough to do against the zone. He, he blew right by him for a layup. Kellen Putman. From the corner, doesn't go. Nice tip by Connor Sheets to Ren Sheets. He goes off glass, and he scores the hoop and the harm for Ren Sheets. And it's going to be Billy Burke's second personal foul. Again, that's a big part of this game. Willie Foster with two, Billy Burke with two, and Ren Sheets going to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line for the chance for the three-point play. And a great tip there by Crestview inside. Sheets was really patient. He's really grown up inside with his patience level. And now now the focus for LCC goes on Angelo, Angelo Collins. Yeah. He, he's been a really good player from off the bench this year, and I think he's... You know, will they sit will they sit Billy for the last six minutes and twenty-five cents? We'll find out. Yeah, Angelo Collins, three points per game, fifteen blocks on the season, tied in the lead for that category with Billy Burke. One three one now by Crestview, it looks like. Different look defensively for the Knights. Go with the one three one. There's a deflection. When you can have that link, you've got six six red sheets on the wing. That can make that very effective. And that's a that's a really good defense for Crestview with Harding on one wing and then Sheets on the other wing. And, and Sheets part two in the middle. Carson Parker, you're not going to rattle him. He's been in so many competitive situations in his career. But there's a block by on Pretty, and Crestview comes up with the basketball. They're in transition mode. Kellen Putman to Jared Harding. Steps through the trap. Tommy Hafner going to set things up. LCC staying with the aggressive man-to-man -man defense. Crestview looking to run their set. They find Jared Harding wide open underneath. He misses it. Gets his own rebound. Stays with it. Good stick to this by Jared Harding to pick up his second field goal of the game. And Crestview has just dominated the paint. That's why they have the three-point lead. LCC is, has done a lot of good things, but but right now they, they have a hard time keeping the Knights out of the paint. Yeah, it looks like offensively, if Crestview can handle the pressure out top, they can find something down low if they if they get a couple, three, four passes in the possession. And Coach Powell's going to take a timeout. We'll take one with him. 5.06 on the Pats Donuts and Cream scoreboard, second quarter, 21-18 Knights. High school basketball on WOSN. It's Crestview, it's LCC, it's 21-18 nights. It's a timeout by Coach Powell. Coach Mark Bagley, what's Coach Powell talking about to his team right here? Well, how to attack a 1-3-1. Crestview's mixed their zones up a little bit and went to a 1-3-1. It appears they may go back to the 2-3 match here, but if they're in a 1-3-1, you got to make sure you attack the elbows. And, and the mistake I think teams make is put a guy in the high post because you already matched there. 
So I, we like to have guys low on that. But, um, and so they're in. It's hard to tell what they're in right I here. I think they're in the 2-3. But yeah. regardless, the good ball movement right here by LCC is making it tough to decipher. The ball goes down to Collins, kicks it out. Willie Foster splits the zone, looks to pass to his teammate, and it is deflected by Crestview. It will stay T-Bird basketball. And LCC was fortunate there. Willie really left his feet, didn't know what to do on that, and that, that's always a cardinal sin in basketball, and, and, and apparently it was deflected on the baseline there. DeMar Foster to trigger it in, goes out top to Carson, or excuse me, Parker Judy. Judy gets the ball back. It's a nice three look. Doesn't score it. Red sheets with the board. Carson Parker and DeMar Foster wait for him to bring the ball down. Doesn't do it. Gets it to Tommy Hefner. Hefner penetrates. Putman has it. Kicks it back out. Good decision by the Knights. Hefner looking to penetrate again. Might have traveled. He did travel. In that possession, the whole time they sped Hefner up. And the longer it went on, he kept them going faster. That's what they want. When the ball goes in the corner like that, that's when you have to slow down and, and reset. Great point. And then the ball never moved. It didn't get out of that side, so the defense never had to shift. Carson Parker with the miss. Jared Harding with the rebound. He's looking to attack. Back to Hefner. On the left side, looking to attack the rim. Goes off glass and scores. And that was much different. It was calculated. He changed speeds. It was a direct line layup. And very good job by Hefner learning from his past. Mistake. Yeah, a little bit more under control, just a little bit, but a big difference gets the bucket. And right now, Dave, LCC selling for jump shots, and this, this zone is really stymieing them here in the, in the second quarter. A lot of dribbling, a lot of one-pass shots, and they have to find a way to get the ball inside, which they did right there. Nicely done. Carson Parker gets the bucket. I believe that was Willie Foster who tossed it into him. Yes, it was. Nice assist for Willie. Tommy Hefner looking to stay with it. Goes off glass and kisses it off the window for another bucket. Hefner right-handed does a nice job going to his left. He does, and he's really, last two possessions, he's really played with his shoulder squared, change of speed under control. Stay in that 2-3 match. 2-3 match with Connor Sheets, number 44, in the high post a little bit because that's where the offense is. DeMar Foster from deep. Red Sheets with the basket, or with the rebound, excuse me. And Coach Powell's seen enough. He's bringing Burke back in with two fouls. He's going to roll the dice. Connor Sheets with the basketball, swings it around. Jared Harding able to stop. Hits the front of the rim, doesn't go. Here comes Carson Parker. Head up, seeing what he's got. Looks to go to Willie Foster. It's the miss, but he's going to draw contact up there on the rim, and it's going to be from Jared Harding. That's going to be Harding's second personal foul. Willie Foster, he's going to go to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. And that's the play I talked about. You can watch all the film you want in the world and practice things, but you can't practice that. Um, and, and Willie Foster is probably the only guy in the gym that can do that, and that was a really athletic play by him. Willie Foster, as you said in the pregame, a player to focus on for the T-Birds. In talking with Coach Powell, Willie Foster is one of the most improved players that he's had this season. He's been really pleased with his progression, and we've seen it tonight on display. Very effective at both ends. We have, and, and so far, though, tonight, Dave, a storyline is the LCC is 0 for 4 from the free throw line. They 0 make, for 5. Make that 0 for 5. But, but Billy there's Burke, Burke. He takes away the pain because he gets the offensive rebound and the stick back. That's Billy's first bucket of the game. And a big one right there to cut the lead to 3. Hayden Parrott being defended by Willie Foster. Doug Etzler, he's going to take a timeout. We'll take one with him. 25-22 nights on WOSN. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken updates you with all area scores with the WOSN Scores app. Download the free app from Android or Apple stores or visit WOSN.TV. Mark Coach Etzler takes that time out right there. Hayden Parrott facing a lot of pressure, getting close to a 10-second call. 2.20 to go in the second quarter. Momentum huge going into halftime. Timeout by Coach Etzler. Do you like it? I do, and with 2.20 to go, this is going to be a big stretch for both teams. How they handle each other's 
strengths and weaknesses. And, and both teams have really played it to their strengths, and that's why the score's so close. There's a nice backup by Hayden Parrott in with the trees. He gets by the first one, but Angelo Collins comes from behind to take that shot away, gets another block. And good sub by Coach Powell to get um, Billy Burke out. Yep, rotated him in, rotated him out. Another deflection on this possession by the Knights, but it seems like the deflections go in the favor of the T-Birds right now. Just goes to a, a player in red against this 2-3 zone. But that's a good sign for Crestview to have that. I mean, there's another deflection and another one. And I'm sure that's going to be addressed at halftime by Coach Powell because the, Crestview has just been a little bit more aggressive, those kind of things. Agree, Mark. And that's their third turnover tonight. So having a good floor game are the T-Birds with only three turnovers. Close to halftime here. Tommy Hefner to trigger it in, goes to Braxton Lee. Here comes a double team. Yeah, it's a 2-2-1 it's a with man principles or man to man with 2-2-1 principles, however you want to look at it. And we're going to call over and back on that situation. I think you could have called over and back. You could have called traveling. You could have called a foul, possibly. <laughs> so they go with the over and back. It's it, a dead ball turnover. It, and it was tough. And this floor is one of the old school type floors. It was hard for both officials to see. Uh, there's a lot of action up in front of them. And, and, and so uh, we don't have a replay up here, Dave, but that, that could have been called all three. I yes. think you're right. But you're right. This is sort of an old gym now. Old of, of the new is what I like to say. I remember when this gym was built in 92, and you felt like you were so far away from the floor. Now you're close to the floor as it compares to most gyms in the area. Nice straight line drive there by Jordan Pretty. He picks up just his second field goal of the game. But yes, right here in the last two minutes, momentum has gone the T-Birds way a little bit as they cut the lead to one. Big possession for the Knights. And right now, Crestview is going backwards. But Hefner answered the bell again. Tommy Hefner with his fifth field goal of the game, his first three of the night, 11th on the season. Big time shot for the Knights right there. Him and Sheets both with 11 has been a huge factor in this game. 29 he, seconds. I think Coach Powell might be waiting and holding for the last shot now. We'll see. And Tommy's saying... Coach Baggs, you should have picked me as the X Factor for the game. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. LCC down to 12 seconds. They're going to go with the last shot. I'm going to look for a high ball screen somewhere here, Dave, on, the, on this set. See if they can get something maybe behind the zone. There's a back screen. DeMar's going to shoot from deep. Does it go? Connor Sheets with the rebound. And that's going to take us to halftime. It's been an outstanding basketball game. And at halftime on the Pats Donuts and Cream scoreboard, Crestview leads 28 to 24. We'll be back with halftime thoughts and stats after these on WOSN. It's halftime here at Crestview. It's the Knights. It's the T-Birds. It's 28-24 in favor of Crestview. What do the numbers tell us here at halftime, Mark? Dave, first of the visiting LCC Thunderbirds. 9 of 17 from 2, 53%. Only 2 of 7 for 3, 29%. Overall, a respectable 46%, but they're 0 for 5 from the free throw line. They're 24 points. They have uh, eight rebounds, four of those offensive, four steals, and only three turnovers. For the home Crestview Knights, they're 28 points. From two, they're 10 of 13, a very impressive 77%. One of five from three. Overall, Dave, 61% in the first half, and five of five for the free throw line. They're 28 points. They've out-rebounded the T-Birds by four. They have 12 and seven turnovers. Which again, against the pressure of LCC, that's respectable. Most of those came early, and Crestview attacked late uh, for their four-point lead. They finished the quarter very well after they're on the ropes a few times. The halftime numbers, especially those shooting percentages, 
61% for Crestview, 46% for LCC. You'll take that any day and twice on Sunday. Halftime adjustments, what are both of these coaches talking to their squads about and what do they need to do better in the third and fourth quarter? I think first of all, for LCC, protect the paint. Out of those 10 twos, I think eight are point blank layups. Uh, and then they gotta do a better job um, offensively of moving the ball inside out. A lot of their threes are off one pass. And, and obviously, free throws are part of the game. They, they can't go over five from the free throw line again, but that's a mental aspect. These first three to four minutes, Dave, for both teams, I think will set the tone for the second half. We saw the pressure pick up from LCC in the last 220 of the second quarter. Crestview was able to handle that, but momentum started to shift a little. A big three by Tommy Hefner in there, and Hef by Tommy Hefner helped the Knights out. Crestview basketball to begin the third quarter. Here we go, partner. Yeah, and we know what rivalry games feel like. You know, playing against each other, Crestview, Van Wert coaching against each other. This has that feeling tonight of going down to the wire. It sure does. We went against each other for years at the JV level. Then you went up to the varsity level, left me all alone down there. But great for you. Did great things with the program. There's Damar Foster with the steal, but he misses the layup. Intimidated maybe a little bit by Harding's present. I think, I think you heard himself on that. And we have a whistle blown right as Crestview was shooting the basketball. Obviously, we care about DeMar Foster being injured, but the Crestview contingent also wondering why they blew the whistle right then and there when the play was still in action. And that, that rule is a little bit vague as far as when do you actually stop it. And typically, it's when there's no threat to score, and that would be an argument that Crestview would probably make there. DeMar Foster down. We're going to take a break. We'll come right back. High School Basketball, you're watching it on WOSN. DeMar Foster up and walking off the floor. That's a great sign. And it's going to be Crestview Basketball. You talked about the rivalry. And it's, as we said earlier, 22-13 in favor of the T-Birds. This, this series was like 0 and 11, or 11 and 0, depending on how you looked at it. LCC won the first 11 meetings. And uh, Mark, I can remember the first time Crestview finally beat LCC, and there were some weird wins, weird losses, depending on how you looked at it in those 11 games. But when Crestview finally got the W, Coach Sagerson, it was here at Crestview. Coach Sagerson came into the Crestview locker room, congratulated the players, congratulated Coach Larry, Larry Taylor um, and the coaching staff of which I was a part. Real classy act by Coach Sags. And uh, it's been uh, an even, even series basically since then. Crestview actually a little bit ahead, but overall that, that initial piece where the teamers just got out and won so many games early. They had great teams, and so did the Knights in there. But real class act by Coach Sagerson. And that's what he was, a classy coach as we go. That's two straight turnovers to start the second half for Crestview. Just trying to do too much. The T-Birds will try and take advantage of it. Carson Parker pops from the elbow. Nothing but cotton for Carson Parker. And he picks up his third field goal of the game. Pressure by the T-Birds. Harding to Callum Putman. Steal by Jordan Pretty. He feeds Carson Parker again. Three turnovers in a row. And Parker scores. And we're going to have a technical foul, I believe, on the bench for LCC. I think Coach Powell thought there was contact there on Carson Parker when he made that layup. So momentum going LCC's way, as you said, the first three, four minutes of the third quarter, huge. And LCC is on a 4-0 run. Crestview has had three turnovers in a row. But now Crestview has a chance to neutralize that momentum with two free throws. Yeah, and Coach Powell is trying to protect his player there. He thought he got hit on the layup. And he went after the official pretty hard. And the other official actually ran in and called the technical foul. So. Two free throws in the ball. It was already Crestview's ball, so it essentially becomes two free throws. Red Sheets at the free throw line. 
the leading free throw shooter for Crestview at 73%, and he makes good on both technical free throws. And Crestview will maintain possession of the basketball. And, and these are some things that happen in rivalry games, too. There's a lot of emotion. And, and, and now Coach Powell's got to handle his emotions, and, and he's got to sit. So this is a hard gym to hear in anyways, and so it's going to be a little bit harder for him. Crestview with the basketball, looking for sheets underneath. It goes out of bounds off of Parker, Carson Parker. Crestview maintains possession, will be under out of bounds. A lot of contact on that turn. I don't know, maybe they just gave him the ball out of bounds yeah. instead of calling the foul. I don't think either fan base likes what's going on right now. <laughs> That's part of the deal. And, and this again, these are hard games to officiate too because they're so hotly contested. Tommy Hafner stops and pops from 12, doesn't go. Connor Sheets with the rebound, but I think he's going to be called for a clear out. And he is. Connor Sheets picks up the personal. That's his first. Got his arm around Willie Foster. He went down to the ground. Good call by the official. Loose ball foul there. And they're going to try to clean things up right now. And, and, and you hope that happens the whole game and, and, and all the way through. And, and that's just part of the deal as we go. Two-point lead for the Knights. Damar Foster with the basketball. Carson Parker running the point. Spins, goes to Billy Burke, and he draws contact. Whenever you attack the basket, good things happen, and that's what we see right there. And Carson, Parson, uh, uh, Carson Parker has been the catalyst for attacking that middle of that zone. He's getting into the heart of the zone and looking for other guys there um, and, and found Burke there for two shots. Billy Burke makes the first free throw for the T-Birds tonight. Billy Burke on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Locations in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Burke with the second free throw comes up empty there. So the T-Birds are now one for six, but off the deflection, they maintain possession it's a little bit of danger zone here for Crestview right now, Dave. It, the first two minutes of this half has been the pace and tempo that LCC wants. DeMar Foster triggering the inbounds. Red Sheets gets a hand on it, deflects it out of bounds. And that's where Crestview has been outstanding tonight. They have got their hands on lots of balls and just kind of thrown LCC off the rhythm at times. Crestview staying in the 2-3 zone, a little hesitant on the under out of bounds. Again, they typically don't run much in zone. They're a man-to-man -man team, but scouting report dictates they should go zone. And there's a nice tip in by none other than Carson Parker. He, he just doesn't get rattled. No, and, and the catalyst of that whole play was Foster. He drove the baseline and created help opportunities. There was a lob from Kellen Putman to Red Sheets. But Billy Burke makes contact, and Billy Burke, yeah, I did it. It's sort of his non-verbals there, and that is going to make it an under-out-of-bounds play. But more importantly, that's number three on Billy Burke. And he's going to come out of the game. Again, Angelo Collins back in. They rotate throughout a game anyway, but I think Burke has probably been on the bench a little bit more in this game because of foul trouble than Coach Powell would like to have seen up to this point. Tommy Hefner with the basketball. Hayden Parrott on the baseline. Good defense by DeMar. Foster. Back to Parrott. Goes to his left. Finds Kellen Putman. Up fakes. Deflected. And it goes out of bounds off of LCC. They're going to maintain possession. And you can see the quick hands now of LCC. And what that makes you do just a little bit is hesitate and go faster. Uh, and, that, and, you, and you kind of throw it instead of shoot it, and that's what's happened inside for Crestview. You've got to find that patience, that balance to shoot the basketball under control, and outstanding defense can really challenge that. Red Sheets fortunate enough to find Connor Sheets as he was going out of bounds. Tommy Hafner to Hayden Parrott to Connor Sheets from 15. Doesn't go, but there's Red Sheets with an offensive rebound. Again, Crestview does seem to be out of sorts here a little bit. They're going a little bit faster than what they typically do, and you've got to contribute to that to the T-Bird defense. Deflection and a steal. Carson Parker looking to attack. Spins to the 10 and scores it. 
Carson Parker with the bucket. The T-Birds up three. Coach Doug Etzler is going to take a timeout. We'll take one with him. 33-30 in favor of the T-Birds on the Pats Donuts and Cream scoreboard. You're watching it on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School to Ray Etzler Gymnasium. 4.43 left in our third quarter with LCC leading 33 to 30. And Mark, it is, if my math is correct, a nine to two run in favor of the T-Birds here as we come out of halftime. Yeah, there's been four turnovers, um, only two points for Crestview. It's just been, and we can sense it, Dave. We both of us sense the tempo. And what's happening right now, Crestview's doing too many things by themselves off the dribble one-on-one. -on -one. And when, it, when LCC senses that, their hands just get in everything, and there's been really good help. So the pressure has been turned up here in the ray, both up here in the temperature and on the floor. <laughs> I like the timeout by Coach Etzler. Let's see how his players respond. Hayden Parrott with the basketball. Again, defense, defensive intensity from the T-Birds. Parrott goes out of bounds off the deflection. Nice defensive possession. The fifth turnover for the Knights here in the third quarter. LCC with an opportunity to build on this three-point lead. And, and right now, they need to get the ball into sheets. They just can't do it because they're so sped up. Look what we got now. Coach Powell playing a little bit of chess again. You're going to be in the 2-3 zone and you're behind. I'm going to pull it out. See what Coach Etzler does if he's going to go to man-to-man. -man. Three-point lead, not that big of a deficit. Carson Parker looks to find something. LCC into their offense now. And Parker's been the guy that's been penetrating that zone. He sure has. And th this would be when, when, again, the shot clock conversation comes up. And I, I do think that's probably the next big thing happening in high school basketball. I would agree with you. Just there's some mechanics of the whole situation that have to be ironed out. I know that it's used in some states already, but I just, when I watch college basketball, and it seems like at least once a game, they have to go to the monitor because they're not sure, or they didn't sh start the shot clock on time, or they're not sure if the ball hit the rim. That could play a big factor in high school basketball. And You've got to have the right person running that shot clock. Yeah, and I was adamantly opposed to it, but but I, I've changed, and I, I think it's time to, to put it in. Uh, and, and I don't think Coach Etzler is upset about this. Sir. If you tell him he's going to go down three in the fourth quarter at home, I think he'd take it. So I, it's one of those things where it's a staring match now. <laughs> yep. Coach Etzler down to our right on one knee on the floor. Just patiently looking at the game in front of him and it's punch counter punch between the coaches right now let alone the players and all this means is they're going to go to the Crestview celebration early tonight for for the for the coaching staff yes uh, Crestview honored coaches Bob Perkins and Carl Etzler longtime softball coaches coach Perkins 18 years as a volunteer Willie Foster attacks. He misses it. Tommy Hefner comes up with the all-important rebound, and then he is fouled by Willie Foster, who picks up his third. But, yes, Coach Bob Perkins working with the pitchers in the Crestview softball program for 18 years, and then Coach Carl Etzler, a 21-year career, both as an assistant and a head coach, winning state championships at both levels as an assistant and as a head coach in 2016. Crestview softball program, very, very yeah. strong. And that, that's a really interesting thing that happened. Let's see if that galvanizes Crestview because the game slowed down. And, and can LCC keep that pressure up that they had before? Big possession for the Knights here. They've got to find a quality look. To Sheets inside, right there. Red Sheets looking to go to work on Carson Parker. Goes with the left hand. Comes up short. Parker with the rebound. A big mix, miss in the context of this whole game up to this point because now again, the T-Bird's going to pull it out, try and make Crestview match up. And one of the lost things on this game has been pretty. 
18 a game, and I think he's got four right now. And so he hasn't really gotten involved. The foul is on number five for Crestview. That's Braxton Leith as he fouls Carson Parker from behind. But yeah, great point. Jordan Pretty leading score for LCC at 18 points a game. He's on the bench right now with four. Damar Foster with the basketball on top. Crestview has extended the 2-3 zone, but they still are in the zone. Matthew Quatman with the basketball. Pass across the face. Jared Harding, a player to watch for the Knights, according to Coach Bagley, thought about going for a steal there. And this will be really interesting, Dave, as we get close to the turning time, the tournament draw on Sunday. A lot of people are going to probably zone LCC. Um, and Division Four is so strong, as we know, whether it's a Wapak district or the Alina district, those guys all go to Bowling Green. And it, it's you have to play well for a long time to, to make it out of B BG. LCC, the number one ranked team in Division Four, the Northwest District Four. Crestview ranked number four in Northwest District Two. That's 14 fouls for both teams. So the last 30 seconds, Dave, will be shooting uh, the bonus. The bonus is different. It's two shots, as we know now. And what we've seen that do is not much. It's, it's shortened the game up, if anything, because there's fouls reset at the quarter. And the way LCC has held the ball here, this has been really fascinating to me. I, I love to hear both coaches' strategy and the whole thing. But it certainly has made this third quarter go faster. And... LCC had all the momentum, and we'll see how the fourth quarter plays out. Great point, Mark. And I, I did see, I didn't think Coach Hetzler would change his defense with 30 seconds left to go in the quarter. Willie Foster with the three misses. Pretty with the offensive rebound miss. And Carson Parker with the tip, but it's not going to count. Came after the buzzer. Three quarters are in the book. And LCC with a 33-30 lead on the Pats Donuts and Cream scoreboard. You're watching it here on WOSN. Welcome back to the Ray. Ray Etzler, Jim Dacium here in Convoy with one quarter left to play. It's the T-Birds 33, the Knights 30. The timeout, the quarter break, Mark. What's Coach Etzler talking about defensively here? Is he going to match up or stay in the zone? I think they'll stay in the zone. And that was like two quarters and one. The first four minutes, LCC dominated, created turnovers, got out in space, and then and Crestview couldn't score two free throws. The last four minutes was basically LCC held the ball. Crestview going man-to-man -man here, Dave. Yes, they are. They're going to go man coming out of the quarter break. Got to get a stop. Pretty with the penetration and the foul as he goes to his left and comes back with a shot to his right. Takes the contact and the personal foul goes on Kellen Putman. And Jordan Pretty going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. A chance for a three-point play. And he gets in. He's one of those players that can makes the game really slow. And, and all of a sudden, he... He could be a guy who goes from four points to 14 like that. Tommy Hafner with the turnover. You're right. The Knights in a little bit of danger zone. Pretty with the rhythm three. Doesn't go. Connor Sheets with the big rebound. And the, the Knights avoided a dagger right there. And Crestview needs to get the ball inside right now to Sheets. Jared Harding looking in there, but Willie Foster off of him and helping out with Red Sheets. Unable to go down inside to him. They go to Connor Sheets. Jared Harding for three. That's a miss. Carson Parker with another rebound. The steady Eddie. Carson Parker pops from the free throw line. Doesn't go. Here comes Hefner. Parker on him. Gets to the window and scores it. The first bucket of the second half for Crestview comes from Tommy Hefner. They have two free throws, but that's the first field goal. They desperately needed that, that shot right there. Yeah, to say you didn't score your first field goal until the seven-minute mark of the fourth quarter and you're only down four, uh, you'll take that. But you have to respond now if you're Crestview. You're playing man-to-man. -man. 
LCC getting into their set. Carson Parker. Here comes Pretty against the man. Stops, pops, doesn't go. Red Sheets claims the rebound, clears everybody out. And Pretty's gotten really good shots this quarter. He's only made one, but you know where they're going right now. Yeah, he's more aggressive against the man defense. Jared Harding gets it back out. Tommy Hafner swings it. Connor Sheets looking for a flash in the post. Doesn't get it. Nobody to throw it to. Goes back out top to Putnam. 4 point lead for the T-Birds. They've got the Crestview offense pushed out away from the basket. Hefner looking to find a lane. Nice cut by Putman, goes to Harding. Harding's gonna shoot a three from the other side and he gets it. Jared Harding with just his sixth three-pointer of the season. A big one for the Knights, cuts the lead to one. That was a great possession inside out, Dave. DeMar Foster says, okay, punch, counter punch. He drills his 20th three of the season. Lead back up to four. Huge shot for LCC, and he has been really good tonight. He's hit some timely shots and played great defense. Red Sheets with the basketball in the paint, kicks it out to Jarrett. Hardy, he doesn't score. Counter Sheets with the offensive rebound, doesn't score, and the Knights come up empty. Big possession there. When Red Sheets got the ball initially on that possession, there was nobody between him and the basket. He did look. Coach Powell's going to take a timeout. We're going to keep it here in the fourth quarter. 4.52 to go, 39-35. What's Coach Powell taking that timeout for, Mark? I think both teams, they've retired right now. <laughs> There's been, there was a lot of energy expended the first four minutes of the third quarter. Then a... I think there's some emotional energy when you when you hold the ball and, and, and there's some mental fatigue there as well. And it's been a frantic pace for three minutes here. And I think he wants to get the ball exactly where he wants it. And my guess is pretty. Yes. He, he's, he's got the advantage on, on most guys that are guarding him tonight. And, and um, again, you can only hold down a great scorer so long. And Cress, who's done an awesome job on him, but... I think they're going to be looking to get the ball to him. And for Crestview, they got to find a way to get stops and have possessions like they had before where the ball went inside and back out to Harding for an open three. That's a lot easier to shoot that way than when the ball sticks on one side of the floor. You're exactly right. It goes back to shooting the ball uh, in the driveway. you got a rebounder underneath. Your feet are pointed right at the basket. You step into your shot and you drill it. But I agree with you. I think Coach Powell's setting up a play for Jordan Pretty to, to look to drive and attack the rim, maybe off a reversal and look to put Crestview in a situation where defensively they might be out of position a little bit and they can take advantage of it. So Quatman going, going to trigger the inbound. Angelo Collins up top with the basketball. You got Parker and Pretty, and the ball is in Pretty's hands. He finds Collins, blocked by Ren Sheets. Ren Sheets does a great job defensively for Crestview. And now the Knights have a chance to cut into this four-point lead by the T-Birds. Rich, that, go ahead. That was a great pass by Pretty, but a better block by Sheets. And, the, and Sheets going right at him right now. They're going to call that on the floor on Carson Parker. He's done a nice job here in the second half against Red Sheets defensively, but he picks up the personal there. Just his first of the game. Again, Carson Parker, a heady player. We watched him on the football field. He is going to be going to Ohio Dominican to throw the ball with points on the end of it. Crestview with the basketball now. Butman loses it. He Pretty does. picks it up to Willie Foster. The two-handed two jelly. Boom shakalaka. And Parker's hurt, Dave. He, he hurt his neck on that play. What a play by Foster, but he's hurt right now. Yeah, let's take a look at it. Timeout on the floor. Coach Etzler with the full timeout. We'll take one as well. Coach Etzler going to try and rally the troops and come up with a good offensive set down six. You're watching it all on WOSN.
A timeout by Coach Doug Etzler, down six with 3.59. It comes back to the Knights here in the second half have just not been uh, that fluid on offense, and you got to give the kudos to the LCCD. Absolutely, and, and they, they've just done a really good job the second half of, of turning it up a little bit, but another big possession for Crestview. It's a two-possession game with four minutes. I think that, that Coach Hudson will take that in a heartbeat. Just now you got to execute. you got to come up with points. Playing zone here, Dave. Yes, they are. They've changed it up a little bit. Angelo Collins doing a lot of talking underneath the basket. Make sure his teammates are aware of where the Crestview Knights are along that baseline. Tommy Hafner with the basketball. Jared Harding had a chance to attack the paint. Goes back to Hefner and he draws the personal foul. That foul's gonna be on Matthew Quatman. That's Quatman's second. T-Bird's second. So coming off the dead ball, let's see if LCC goes back to man. I don't think they're going to. I think they're going to stay with the 1-2-2 one, two, two look, Mark. It looks that way, and they're starting fives back on the floor probably to finish the game. A drag play as Hayden Parrott finds himself with the ball in the corner. Nothing there. A little bit of a double team. Go to the red sheets. He kicks it out right away. Tommy Hefner. A lot of contact, no call either way. Gets the ball back, misses it. Billy Burke with the defensive board. Huge play by Burke there. Clean block up top. That was called that way and, and, and got the ball as well. He, him and Parker have done a lot of little things well tonight for the team. They don't get a lot of, uh, of the accolades, but they've done some really good things. Yeah, the little things, the things that maybe don't show up on the stat sheet. You're right. And here's Parker with the basketball. Nothing there, but he finds Pretty attacking the rim, and he draws contact on red cheeks, and he's going to go to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. It's amazing, Dave. That's a lost art in high school basketball, but the ball goes in the post. If you cut and make hard cuts, you're usually open on that, and that's what Pretty did. And again, he's just so smooth. Smooth from the free throw line as well. Two for two on the line now is the 70% free throw shooter. Make it three for three. That extends the lead for the T-Birds to eight. And now Crestus going to have to play faster because now it's a three-possession game and, they're, and they have to do some things they're probably not wanting to do tonight. And there's Carson Parker again. A deflection where Crestview has been able to get deflections in the half court in their 2-3 zone. LCC has gotten a lot of deflections out of their 2-2-1 press. Now they're going to back it up and they're going to go zone. And again, Crestview 28 points in the first half. Lightning uh, hot from outside and, and only seven points here in the second half. And they've worn them down a little bit. Tommy Hefner hits a big three, give the assist to Ren Sheets, but Hefner picks up his 12th three of the season. Couldn't come at a better time, but it may be too little too late. Down five with 205, DeMar Foster running the show out top for the T-Birds. They had to have that, and Hefner's been great all night. He's really played well for him, made big shots, and made the right play. DeMar Foster attacking, finds Pretty on the opposite wing. He drills it, and he gets fouled. Jordan Pretty with the three-pointer, his first of the game, 41st for the season, and he leads the T-Birds with number of threes made and percentage at 43%. A big play, a big assist by DeMar Foster. We talked about it. He had four points heading to the fourth. He's now got 12 looking for 13 in it, and we said, He's the guy that goes from 4 to 14 real quick. And he has tonight in the second half. This is the free throw from the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. So still a little bit of light for the Knights. But they've got to score quickly. And there's a foul called. And it is against Jordan Pretty. And they still got two more before the bonus. So they can keep on being aggressive with a minute 38. Minute 38, up 8. And Crestview's going to have to foul no matter what now. They can't wait very long, go for a steal, but, but a quick foul. Looking for a flare screen for Hayden Parrott. Attacks the baseline. Tommy Hafner with the ball out front. 
Again, LCC going to this zone here in the fourth quarter has been very effective. A great coaching move by Coach Powell. Yeah, surprisingly, we, we didn't think that would happen, but it's really stymied Crestview, too, as well. Hayden Parrott. Three ball, corner pocket. It's good for Parrott. Big three as he makes his 17th of the season. That cuts the lead to seven with 109. Crestview with the timeout. We'll take the timeout as well. It's high school basketball on WOSN. LCC with the five point lead here on the Pats Donuts and Cream scoreboard, 46-41. Crestview with the timeout. They've got to extend their defense now. That, that could really uh, create issues for this Crestview defense. Yeah, they can't wait long to foul. And, and give Crestview credit, they've hit two big threes here against the zone. I would expect LCC to go back man then to finish the game to avoid giving up threes. We'll see what happens here, but they can't wait very long to foul. No, and both teams have one foul to give. Damar Foster with the basketball. Crestview doesn't deny the inbound. He comes across the timeline, and the ball's loose, and it's a turnover. Hayden Parrott looks to go up to Hefner to Jarrett Harding. He draws contact against Billy Burke. The kiss off the glass goes for Harding. It's a big bucket for the Knights to cut it to three with just under a minute. Jared Harding going to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. He can cut it to two, Mark. Yeah, and I think Crestview whiffed on the foul. They, LCC just lost it. Harding misses the free throw, but it is tipped by Ren Sheets, but then Carson Parker gets a hand on it, and it's going to be Crestview basketball. So with 54 seconds to go, a three could tie this thing up. We're a one-possession game, and Crestview has battled the whole game and never gave up with the two threes here late. And you're right, the T-Birds playing man-to-man -man now. Tommy Hafner almost travels down to 38 seconds. Coach Etzler calls the play. They don't have to have a three. Nope, but you got to look for a good bucket. Red Sheets against Billy Burke. Good defense, and the defense wins as the shot goes off the front of the rim by Red Sheets. Damar Foster with the rebound. Kellen Putman with the foul. But we're not going to the free throw line yet. Both teams in the bonus now going home. That was great defense by Burke. He stayed square, and his hands stayed straight up and made him take a, a tough shot. Coach Powell's going to take the timeout. We'll keep it right here. You're right, Billy Burke did what we call in the post, walled up. He simply stayed straight up, did not reach in, did not create a situation where he could be called for a foul. And you really got to say that's another one of those intangibles that both he and Carson Parker have brought to this game tonight that have helped LCC to create and have this three-point lead. Yeah, it just... What, what a game of runs and backs and forth and, and, and give both teams credit, but Cressy was, was dead in the water there and just kind of the two threes and the hustle and effort plays. The, you know, the, they didn't get the end one, but they get the layup. And, and so LC's got, CC's got to take care of the ball now and make free throws and that would be it. But Anything can happen, Dave. It's high school basketball. High school basketball, and Crestview's going to go. Full denial on the inbound. Billy Burke to trigger it. They look to go long. They've got a denial situation, and there's a foul right away. Not a bad foul because only a second goes off the clock. Give the foul to Hayden Parrott. I believe that's his second, and DeMar Foster is going to go to the free throw line. DeMar Foster, a 72% free throw shooter. So if you're Coach Powell, you're pleased with having him going to the line. Absolutely, and this is the part of the game I, I do kind of miss, Dave, is the one and one Because now the, it's a different kind of pressure when you have two shots. Yeah, you can relax a little bit. And Foster eyes it and hits the first one, a big free throw to extend the lead to four. And, and makes it a two possession game no matter what now. Two possession game. Coach Powell's going to have everybody for the T-Birds off the line, and he's going to sub on a make. 
So they'll be able to set their defense on a bank. They get it. And Matthew Quatman's going to come into the game for DeMar Foster. Two big free throws for Foster. His teammates give him some high fives coming off the floor. Yep, and great coaching there again by, by Coach Powell. Tommy so Hefner with the three. Doesn't go, but Jared Harding with the rebound. And he's going to be fouled. So the last thing you want to see happen if you're a T-Bird is the clock stop, and that's exactly what's occurring here. Jarrett Harding going to go to the free throw line. And that foul, that foul is on Billy Burke, and that is his fifth foul. So Billy Burke has fouled out of the game, and now they've started the clock. Coach Powell's going to take his time and let Harding think about these free throws a little bit. So Angelo Collins is going to come back into the game. The 6'5 junior going to replace Billy Burke. And Billy Burke getting a nice round of applause from the LCC faithful. Two big free throws here with 15.6 for Jared Harding on the Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throw line where home style happens here. Harding, a 66% free throw shooter. The first one's up. It's nothing but cords. And that's a big one right there for the 6'2 senior. He's got to drill this one too, Mark. Yeah, and he's played a really good fourth quarter for Crestview, and Roy really had an impact to get back in this basketball game. Second one's up, eyes flies, and he scores it. And Coach Etzler's going to take a timeout. He's got a full timeout. We'll take it as well. We'll be right back with the last 15.6 on the Pat's Donuts and Cream scoreboard. You're watching it on WOSN. It's the T-Birds, it's the Knights, it's 48-45 in favor of LCC. Exactly what we expected in a rivalry game, Mark. And now, LCC ball out of bounds. What have the Knights got to do? Well, they got to get a steal here. I mean, if they don't get a steal, they got a foul. Look for LCC, a lot of teams will do this. They can run the baseline to maybe go deep, especially with the guys on the ball. So there's all kind of strategy both ways here. Uh, does LCC go for a knockout punch with a deep pass if someone's on the ball? Or do they just want to get the ball into the, in the free throw shooter? And, and Foster is the one they want to get to now. He just hit two. Everybody is up. So the basket is unprotected with red sheets on Carson Parker, the inbounder. They don't look to go long initially, and they get it inbounds. Crestview doesn't foul right away there, and Carson Parker is going to get fouled. Three seconds go off the, the scoreboard, but Parker Judy, he had the basketball. He's an 83% free throw shooter, but he's only shot six on the season. He's able to get it back to Carson Parker. Carson Parker, he shoots 78% from the free throw line, and we know Carson Parker this isn't too big of a moment for him at all. First one goes down for Parker. Extends the lead to four. The soft rim <laughs> kept that one down. And a huge shot there for Parker. The second one's up. He misses that one. Here come the Knights. Hayden Parrott on the left side. Red Sheets with the screen. Parrott from deep. He scores it. Coach Etzler's out of timeouts, so though. That's the problem. It's a big three, but unfortunately, Coach Etzler had used his timeouts, and it's going to be a 49-48 victory for LCC. An outstanding game by both squads. And again, Peyton Parrott with the three mark, but again, the four-point deficit, out of timeouts, nothing Crestview could do. No, and... and they hit three threes in the last two minutes. They did everything they could to get back in the game, but that was a, you know, a, a game where both coaches will say, I wish I would have saved this or done that, but what a great high school basketball game and a great atmosphere at Crestview High School. Yeah, great, great game, and we'll come back with our Stolly Insurance Stolly Hustle Award winner. You're watching it on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School, where we have witnessed a thriller as the LCC T-Birds come away with the one-point victory, 
49-48 to over Crestview. Individual scoring looks like this for the Knights. Hayden Parrott had six points. Tommy Hefner with 16. Jarrett Harding with 13. And Ren Sheets with 13. For the victorious LCC T-Birds, Jordan Pretty had 12. Willie Foster was six. Carson Parker was 16. DeMar Foster with 12. And Billy Burke with three. Coach Mark Magley, it's been a pleasure working with you tonight. And now's the time where we look at our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. We want you to check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. Who are we going with, Mark? Lots of outstanding players on both teams tonight. What a great high school basketball game. Both teams are going to learn from this it come tournament time. But the guy that, that did all the little things right and made a big free throw that they needed at the end was Carson uh, Parker. He did it all. He played great defense. Offensively, he scored when he needed to do for his team tonight and picked up the slack when, when for a while there, Jordan Pretty wasn't scoring and, and did all those little things right. So he was definitely our hustle player the, uh, of the night from Stolle. Yeah, the Stolle Hustle Award winner goes to Carson Parker. When LCC was out of sorts, Offensively, he was the one that brought them back in. And then when they turned up the heat defensively, he was the one leading the charge. When Billy Bird got in foul trouble, Carson Parker went down and guarded Ren Sheets in the post. Very deserving of our Stolly Hustle Award tonight. With the win, Coach Sean Powell's team improves to 15-2 overall. And the Crestview Knights, with the loss, they dropped to 13-7. and seven. We want to thank Crestview Athletic Director Austin Fleming for hosting us this evening. Our cameraman, Jacob O'Neill and Zach Keith. And Zach will take this back to the studio and edit it for all of you to watch all the great stuff from these two teams tonight. For Mark Bagley, I'm Dave Bowen. It's been a pleasure. And until next time, may all of your jumpers hit nothing but the bottom of the net.